Hello and welcome to the Controller Talk podcast presented by Danfoss North America. Our goal is to bring you information about using Danfoss controls in the supermarket and warehouse industry, specifically in the U.S. and Canada. We're doing these twice a month for now. You can catch these podcasts wherever you get your podcast, and it's also available through the Danfoss Ref Tools app. For the video version, check us out on the Danfoss North America YouTube page. Search for Controller Talk to see our video collection. I'm Dave Yoder, along with Chris Brown. Well, Chris, things are a little bit different today. We're in the studio, but we're um, going to bring in a guest here very soon and uh, talk about some more CO2 stuff. Yep, we're dragging friends into the conversation now, so that's right. <laughs> looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, now, for us, this recording uh, puts us kind of in the Halloween time frame, although it may not air until after Halloween, but I do have a tip for you. This is courtesy of a comedian named Dimitri Martin. Oh, boy. Don't go out wearing your piñata uniform again this year. <laughs> Take a couple bats outside the ribs. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I'll make note of that one. <laughs> we need you for future recordings. <laughs> Love the wisdom. <laughs> That's right, yeah. We've decided not to talk about sports because we're in Baltimore County right now. And... uh the locals know what that's all about. Depression about sums that one up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, there's still room on the Phillies bandwagon. <laughs> At least for today, there is. Well, it feels like we were a pinata this weekend. If that <laughs> puts the two things together. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Well, Chris, the, uh, the CO2 mobile training unit, uh, sometimes called the M2U or Big Red, has been making its way around the U.S. this year. And uh, that's going to be something we talk about today. Yep. Um, but rather than the, just the two of us go on and on about it, we're going to bring in a guest who is semi-legendary in the refrigeration world. Uh, by day, he's the manager of technical troubleshooting and training for CoolSys. And by night, he's, let's say, 51% of the popular Advanced Refrigeration podcast. He's also a part-time vampire, Brett Wetzel. Welcome, Brett. How are we doing, guys? Nice. Doing good, well. to be on good, here. good to have you on. Thanks, man. Do you ever sleep, Brett? Um, there's 24 <laughs> usable hours in every single day. Let's just put it at that. Okay. All right. That's commendable. All right. Good for you. So, um, yeah, Brett, we wanted to ask you a few questions about the mobile training unit. And um, you've seen it at least once, right? Yeah. So I saw it at the uh, NASRC, uh, the, the Natural Refrigerant Summit over in uh, Irwindale, California. Okay. And then, uh, you know, we actually had it at our our training facility over in Fullers in California for a couple of weeks, actually. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you guys had Steve Moss there and a uh, whole bunch of other people over there doing training for, for all of our guys. You know, we were bringing people in from whether it be Northern California, Southern California, you know, because as you know, cool system just about every single state in the, in the, you know, at least in the lower 48 here. And, yep. and we were just trying to take full advantage. You know, we had classes packed at, you know, anywhere from eight to 15 people, I think at, at a shot. And you know, it was multiple days that we were doing it. So, you know, we got a whole bunch of people that were able to go through the, the, the CO2 training mobile unit. Yep. Yep. And I think in Southern California, I missed you by a couple weeks or so, um, when they moved it from one location to another. So, uh, yeah, that was earlier this year. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what were your thoughts the first time you saw it and actually saw it up and running? I, I love the fact that it's, it is actual mobile, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you are able to take it around and, and go to different, you know, different locations through, throughout the, the country fairly easy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, I saw it being set up. I saw it be, you know, put back together and being packed up to, to go to its next, next home for a little bit for its next location. And it was just, it was fairly simple, um, to do, uh, also the fact that the charge amount, you know, you're not having to, you know, remove the charge every single, uh, you know, every single time that you have it, um, mm -hmm. You know, it's able, you know, every time that it was at our facility, we were able just to shut it down, you know, do the fact that that, that piping on there is, is stainless. And so, you know, it, there was no relief that was blowing. Uh, so, you know, you can use utilize it for a trainer and not have to worry about, you know, hey, well, I got to keep it running the whole night and keep a watch on it. No, you can shut it down at night and, and let the charge sit in there without having a relief blow. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it, it only holds, I think, uh, just under 50 pounds of, of CO2, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, it's it's right around there. Yeah. So, uh, Brett, for guys, uh, obviously it's a training unit, but just some of the particulars, guys that 
hadn't seen CO2 before, just getting into this, how how the unit really helped some of those guys get up to speed a little better? Uh, a lot. I mean, it's it's there's pressure gauges all over. There's pressure transducers all over the place. You know, as you know, a lot of times it's it's hard to kind of explain how the unit kind of works. So you know, the math with the HPV really doesn't make any sense. You know, theoretically, you know, when that HPV opens because you're dropping down to whatever the flash tank pressure is, whether it be 490, you know, 535, for whatever it's set for, you know, it basically goes from so, during subcritical operation, right? It'll be running. Uh, you know, trying to maintain three to five degrees of subcooling based off of what the, you know, whether it be the 326 or the 782 pack controller, right? And then as soon as that opens up, you theoretically, you'd think, oh, well, all the, all the vapor is going to disappear. And and that was one of the hardest things. Like I literally, before I called someone, I, I was racking my brain for like an hour and a half. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. How is there any liquid? It did the science doesn't make any sense. I've been doing superheat and subcooling for years. It doesn't make any sense. And then to realize that, you know, during subcritical operation, I mean, you'll see you know, 70% of that liquid be, you know, still there. And then, you know, that 30% of uh, vapor that's being produced gets you know, pushed over to the, to the, you know, right. uh, flash tank, which essentially then goes to the BGV over to the, the medium temp suction header, or yeah. in some cases in, in this trainer, it can be also, uh, you know, went over to the, the, uh, you know, the parallel compression. Um, you know, that the, the, there's a, I think like a 36 inch screen or something or 48 inch screen in there, which I thought was amazing. So, you know, cause whenever you're trying to show the programming, you know, you're usually looking at it at, you know, the 880, right. The 880A mm-hmm. or whatever it might be on. And so the fact that every, you know, everyone's not hovering around a little 20 inch, you know, computer screen trying to see everything that's going on. And the fact that you can see, everyone can see what we're talking about the same amount of time. So it's, that, that's excellent for training because then no one ever gets lost in the conversation that you're having. Yeah. And this is going on eight years now since we uh, designed and, and built that thing. Uh, you still see a lot of relevance with the components there, the, the way the training played out, that type of thing. Yeah. You know, I, my thought is on that is, is it, a lot of it was, was, you know, this, this was produced in Denmark, right? So, um, you know, it had European technology that was new at that point in time and, and has, you know, and everyone else. I mean, the United States is, is behind the ball as far as, right. you know, how fast they had to implement CO2 and so on and so forth. So uh, I think a lot of the technologies on there are extremely relevant. You know, the parallel compression, the ejectors. Um, that was the first time actually me seeing ejectors. You know, mm-hmm. I, I knew the principle and how it worked, but I've just never physically seen it in person. Yeah. And I think a good comfort level guys get just from that, from seeing it and saying, okay, it's what I thought it was, or now I, I get it. It's not as crazy as I might've thought it was. So yeah. And I think just the visibility helps a lot. I agree. Absolutely. So, I mean, if you were kind of one big takeaway or one feature that stood out the most from, from when you spent some time with it, what was the, the biggest feature you, you saw? The fact that you, you can run this trainer in, you know, th- three different modes, right? You can have it mm-hmm. do the parallel compression, you can have it do the ejectors, or you can just have it running as a, a regular, you know, transcritical uh, rack. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the fact that no matter where you're going in the nation, like, hey, if you if you were to happen to take this up in Canada, well, we have ejectors. Well, so do we. Let's click a switch. Now, all of a sudden, that unit's running on ejectors. Oh, you have parallel compression? Oh, wait, this does too. And then just turn that on, and now you have parallel compression. So the, the, the versatility of the different technologies that are available and it, it, it transposes with, you know, other areas. So it, it makes it applicable to the other areas that you're actually going to take the trainer into. Yeah. How much, uh, how much demand out do you think is out there for this kind of a training unit? Uh, a lot. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, they're, they're trying to do some sort of CO2 training. You know, I had built, uh, presentation and class uh from for, for my guys over at cool so it's my guys and gals all the technicians and you know we had took a field trip over to you know over to one of the active stores that we had running the fact that you have this trainer in front of you and we're able to shut down and not worry about you know shutting the system down because fear of you know damaging any food or anything so like instance you know a lot of the controllers you know when you when you have some sort of failure let's say high pressure failure there's a certain reset function that it goes through to make sure it doesn't overload 
you know, the overload the rack, right? Because CO2 has so many BTUs per pound. You, it's not like a, a normal HFC, HFO rack where if you shut it down and you could just turn it back on and all your cases are running, yeah, it'll run a little bit of high pressure. CO2 racks, they need to be staged, right? So whether you're staging for one of two reasons, right? First, you're going to stage on the medium temp, obviously, and then your low temp. But also you can do it, uh, you know, with the MOP off of the, you know, the case controller. So having that trainer right in front of you, you know, shows you, okay, well, look, it has to start the medium temp first. This is why, because it has to be able to do, you know, the complete cycle. And then we can introduce the medium temp cases. And then once the medium temp, temp cases are, are running, you know, then obviously the, the low temp. So just it, it, it takes some of the worry out that, hey, if I goof something up, it's a trainer. It, it's it's supposed to have things go wrong with it and, and for us to fix it. Where if you were trying to do this in person in a class, uh, you know, how long am I going to shut it down for? Am I going to lose any gas? Like, so like, you know, I plan, I had purchased a, a another trainer. Um, and, you know, my, my, what we're going to do is, is take it right from startup. So we're going to do, you know, basically systems empty. All right. And then we're going to go through the components. We're going to talk about all this and then turn that into, okay, now we have to pull a vacuum. We can go out and do that and go out. Okay. Uh, now we can charge. Now we, the vacuum is good. Now we can charge it up with vapor, charge it up to hundred pounds past the, the triple point. All right, good. We're straight. Everyone understand that. All right, let's go back. All right. Now we have to charge it up just for, by the system itself. So I can charge that, that, the flash tank up to where it needs to be and, and just take them through the steps of process um, for startup, because that's, unless you're doing training on a live store, trying to teach on startup, just basically off of auditory and, and, and not really getting to get their hands on it is a, it, it's a lot, it's more helpful than being able to actually put their hands on it and actually do the whole process step by step by step, making sure the sensors are accurate, making sure the pressure transducers are accurate and not having that, that concern in the back of your mind, a, I can't let this thing shut down or B, you know, Hey, this is a store that has to be up and running. So I can't really take my time and, and, you know, and learn off of this while I'm trying to get this thing up and rolling. So yeah. that's what I think is amazing about, you know, having an actual CO2 transcritical trainer. Yeah. And if you really wanted to, you can make dry ice just to show them what can happen. If you really wanted to. Um, so another question I was thinking about, um, what do you, in your opinion, what's the best way to use it? Do you think you would just park it in a couple of different areas in the country or kind of truck it all around to hit the highest demand areas? So, you know, as you know, uh, I'm in charge of training here at Colsys. And so we have a couple of training centers, uh, you know, throughout the country. We have one in uh, Anemone Falls, Wisconsin. Uh, we have one in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. We have one in Houston, Texas, and we have one in, in Fullerton, California. Uh, the trainer that I did purchase, it will be in, uh, it'll be in Houston, Texas. And, uh, you know, it, the the idea is, if you know, the trainer that I did purchase is mobile. And and what I'm going to do is, is yes, hold the class in Houston. But if I find out there's a very high demand for a class up in, let's just say up in Syracuse or, you know, down in Georgia. Um, and if it's, if it makes more sense for me to ship it there instead of, you know, shipping eight to 10 technicians out, you know, I'm paying for the plane ticket and paying for, you know, the hotels and stuff, it, it would be fairly simple for me. Okay. Then that means I just have to go there. I can train the class and that's just one plane ticket rather than, you know, X amount. So we're, we're, we're looking at those capabilities too, but like I, I, think that that is a viable thing to do. I mean, you could have it in one, one location for most of your classes. Then you find that there's a higher demand in a certain area. I could basically just pick it up, put it on, put it on a, a truck, ship it out to wherever. And, you know, it'll probably be cheaper for me to run the classes, which means I can train more people. And that's what I'm all about. Just trying to make sure I can get as many people trained up and to feel comfortable and safe as humanly possible. Yeah. 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 It makes sense. And then as far as, um, this Danfoss unit, is there anything that you thought, Hey, you know, this is what I would change about it. If I could. Putting a low temp suction group on it. Ah, okay. Yeah. That's the only thing that, that I, that I would, that I would probably change. Uh, you yeah. know, I, I would, you know, put the low temp in there, uh, regardless of your, you know, putting the, it could, as you guys know, it can be done several different ways, right? Typically, mm -hmm most conventional, you know, uh, uh, booster to style racks, right? They, they take the low temp suction and derive it right into the, the rear end of the, of the medium temp, uh, mm -hmm. suction header, right? 
Yeah. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, uh, liquid injection that has to be done, right? Uh, vapor injection is basically done, you know, by the BGV. And then, but also you have sometimes for load control and also low superheat instances, you also have hot gas injection, right? To, you know, for compressor protection. But there's many different ways you can do it. You could do, uh, you, you could do a low temp compressor on a low mm -hmm. temp oil separator and then just take that refrigerant going through, run it through some kind of desuperheating, whether it be a coil or whatever, and then run it directly in the flash tank. It's still the same principle because the load still essentially goes back to the medium temp suction, but you know, different candy bar, different wrapper, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all, we're all doing the same thing. It's just, it's, it's mitigated just a little bit differently, right? Yeah. So you wouldn't necessarily need a low temp evaporator as we commonly think of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we, we could, uh, you know, we, well, we, we would need the low temp, we would need the low temp evaporator for the, for the, for the load of the, of the suction, right? Mm -hmm. Like having that all the way down to, you know, cause on the ear trainer, right. They have, yep. uh, it's, you know, let's just say a 420 pound or a 400 pound suction on the medium temp. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we would also need one more evaporator. Right. Um, yep. and then we would also need one compressor and then depending on where we decide to put, you know, the, the, the discharge of that low temp compressor, whether it be the flash tank or whether it be directly into the, the back of the suction header, you know, different components would have to be added to, you know, make it adaptable. But like I said, that's the only thing that, that I think mm -hmm. that I would change is just being able to have that low temp capability just to show, you know, how that works. I mean, that, yeah. that was, you know, when we had the training out there, the guys were like, well, where's the low temp compressor? I was like, well, it doesn't have one. Yeah. Well, why not? I was like, well, not every single rack is yeah. a you know is a it, you know has low temp you can have medium temp racks that are set up exactly like this and you know i, I try to relate like booster style systems to like something like a a, a compound compressor right um uh, we all know the big green ones uh you know where basically you're taking the suction at, at 10 pounds you know for an hfo rack or hfo or hfc refrigerant um discharging out out the front it becomes anywhere from 68 to 78 pounds goes back into the compressor with a little bit of vapor injection and liquid injection and then gets recompressed from 68 to 78 pounds all the way up to whatever the ambient is going to be for the head pressure right yeah. and and just that principle of understanding you know that's the reason why we can save so much money with you know doing this method of compression right because instead of doing if you tried to do you know 200 200 pounds all the way up to potentially 14 or 1500 pounds that's a fairly high compression ratio right yeah so yeah. it's a lot easier uh, on the compressor as far as energy consumption to have basically two parts of the compressor doing three you know three to one compression ratios and then basically instead of having like an eight to one ratio you're only having essentially if you add the two together a six to one ratio which is going to save you more money yeah. more in efficiency right yeah yeah okay all right hey uh, brett do you have time for one more question yeah sure i always try to uh, give chris these ridiculous questions and uh, stump him and you know his if he were a batter he'd be doing okay but for our exercises his average is slipping a little bit mm -hmm. um, but i have a question for you so that training unit is roughly it's a size of a small container right um what do you think the cubic feet is of that thing if you emptied everything out of it? Uh, am I allowed to use a calculator? Because I'm I, I'm bad at mathing. Go right ahead. You have ten seconds. All right. Get to use calculators. What's going on here? <laughs> I'm gonna have to say 136 cubic feet. 136. Very <laughs> specific number. <laughs> Chris will be happy with your answer because the answer is. 1,235. <laughs> yeah. You can wow. dispute this offline if you think that uh, my numbers are wrong. I have dimensions. Oh, I didn't do the height. Uh, You're late. You already said your answer, Brett. We're still... <laughs> He's going to stick to refrigeration no after this. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Appreciate hey, that. Hey, no problem. I, I'm starting to think there's a commonality here, and it's not you or me, Brett. And so. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. As long as we don't turn the tables on me, I'm fine with it. <laughs> hey, Brett, it's been uh, really cool having you on to talk about this training unit. And uh, I'm sure we'll run into you out there in the in the field somewhere. Right. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Brett. On. If you'd like to email us with a suggestion for topics or a question to cover or comment or anything like that, you can email us 
at Controller Talk North America at danfoss.com. That's Controller Talk North America at danfoss.com. Thanks for listening. Our studio and video engineer is Raul Garcia. Actually, he's our audio guy. And uh, Maria is uh, running the show here with Josh Tignall. So Josh went from the new guy to helping out 100%. And he's, uh, he's doing all right. No donuts today, but that's okay. That's all right. Until next time, for Chris Brown, I'm Dave Yoder. Stay cool. Stay cool.